Well, there she is. Um, she's all piped in and are ready to fire and test. So this is a progress video. I guess you would say this is like the fourth video in this series. The first one showed uh, the original um, piping as we found it, as it was piped in back in 2008. And then uh, we had sort of an intermediate step, and then we had uh, a sort of brief discussion of uh, what this collection of pipes is up here. So let's recap uh, the old um, improperly sized and installed piping was removed. And we use the Burnham piping kit, which um, supplies almost all of the fittings that, that you're going to need to um, make this uh, header. Uh, the risers, headers, equalizer line, and uh, the Harford loop, and the return piping. Let's really get a shot here looking around so this is a two inch two two inch um, risers and this is called a drop header as the header is below the um, outlets you're you have to use an extra um, couple of fittings and nipples uh, this is we used a five and a half inch nipple here and a six inch nipple here to make certain that this sloped in this direction allows the water to drain back to the boiler. And this is three inch. This is what's called out by the manufacturer. And this is the minimum size of header that you should use when firing this size boiler. Let's uh, get another shot of the specs. There. Again, this is an oil-fired boiler. They um, don't want you firing this in gas for political reasons. This is their call-out for the Harford Loop. So um, most of the time, uh, most people do the Harford Loop with a T, but they like using the Y. So we pushing it down. This is the uh, wet return here. This is the original piping from the 30s. Uh, with the check valves there as part of the pump return, uh, the steam pump return system or return trap. You can see someone's really chattered them up to get try to get them apart. So we don't know what we're going to find in there. And as, as you can see, there's the new piping with the new drain. If you go back, um, on the original video of this series, you'll find that this went directly into the return without the Harford loop. So we had this a little bit higher than what's called for uh, because we definitely want to keep this check valve under water, keep it wet, to make sure it works properly. So, oh yes, so this is inch and a quarter and, and this is inch and a half. Now, once you get to this point here, um, because of the subtle changes that we made here with this piping, this isn't going to work with the kit. So we bring our own piping and um, we make certain that this will work. So some of these uh, nipples here are special lengths. So this is exact. This is not a six inch nipple. That's a six and a half inch nipple. Uh, let me show you what we got here. This is the two and a half inch steam supply, which we've tied onto here. This is the original, and this is a ten and a half inch nipple because we want to get it to line up here. If we were installing this boiler new, we would be able to shift the boiler to be able to use a standard nipple there, but because that is a fixed point in space, and the boiler pretty much, we don't want to shift this boiler around because it's really not our boiler. We're not bringing it in. 
Um, we had to, uh, this is now a fixed point in space. So we had to dial that in and fit that. Let me come around here to the other side on the return. So on the return, we've got a nice, lovely webstone um, full port purge valve there to really drain that quickly, get, get rid of a lot of the sludge. Um, that's a male by female, three quarter inch full port. And then we put a, a hose fitting on the end. That really works very well for, for draining it. And then we got a bushing on the end to so you can remove that, really get in there and dig out all the goodies if you need to. Um, so we got a brass bushing tied in with the copper. Uh, again, the, this, this water has a pH of about, you know, lemon juice. So, uh, there's going to be some corrosion here. We're going to, uh, customer is going to get, uh, get their water treated to, uh, bring down the pH. And we got a new backflow preventer here. Um, and, uh, we've reconfigured that to make it a little bit, a uh, little bit neater, I think. Um, probably could have put a valve here at some point. Um, maybe next time. Also, we're going to probably increase the size of this uh, uh, barometric draft regulator. Um, it's going into a fairly large chimney, which was originally designed to pull oxygen through a, a pile, a big pile of burning rocks. So this chimney, when this gets going, is probably going to have a hellacious draft and will tend to uh, um, pull the flame uh, off of the uh, burner head here if the draft gets too high. Uh, this is a, a thankless coil which has been uh, deactivated and the, um, they've got hot water there from the electric water heater. Uh, the VXT had shown 35, probably not true. It's um, probably been reset a couple of times, but uh, we had to, we got this tag and now we're starting a new um, process so that uh, we can keep track of how much water is lost. So uh, today's date, and it was 035, and then we pushed the reset button. So now it will read zero, and we'll start again. So we checked the pigtail. Um, Burnham is now using um, brass pigtail. Uh, we checked the pigtail, we took this off here and uh, blew into it and it was free, so uh, that's fine for now. But as soon as this clogs up, this gets removed and we're gonna put on a uh, we're gonna put a brass one on. We have a test tee here. This is an, a three-quarter inch brass male tee. You remove this plug, you blow in here, and you make sure that this is free. Um, I think what was happening was this did get clogged and uh, customer reports that the uh, they had a bucket under the um, pressure relief valve at one point. Uh, probably because this guy had uh, clogged and the pressure was getting too high and tripping the valve. One of our little tricks that we like to do is to remove the sight glass fittings and come out with a short three inch nipple and a T and a plug so you can rod this out and we offset it so we can add our drain valve. And I got a hose there. I don't have a bucket to run it into. But that is, it's now holding water and you can see the meniscus there. You can see a little bit of etching on the glass, but the glass is still good. And we've got new gaskets and fittings there. So, oh, come on. There you go, focus, that's it. We've opened this, it doesn't look too bad. This charring looks a little suspicious, but so far the refractory looks pretty good. And, um, too bad we can't fire it and test it, but the radiators aren't hooked up and <laughs> there's no oil. They've got these lovely skook of oil tanks over here, which uh, they're going to be hooked up to this. And then we're going to come back and uh, fire this thing when the radiators are hooked up. 
and uh, test out this this piping here which if I do say so myself I think this looks pretty damn good uh, very very pleased how that worked out that should produce really really nice dry steam for the customer so I think this video is getting a little long I know that uh, I'm told that uh, after about two minutes I've lost 50% of my audience so if you're still uh, sticking sticking through to the end um, thank you thank you very much and uh, thank you for your comments and your questions uh, help keep me honest and uh, I'm going to make another video uh, describing what we did over there uh, real quick so watch for that one and uh, be well